I definitely do. Especially when it's about my apps and cloud. Recently, Audrey Burden, a senior program manager at Microsoft, she posted a challenge on Twitter uh, around Power Apps and Cloud, and there are three challenges inside it. And in this video, we'll try to um, solve these three challenges um, by taking a step by step approach and learn some new and cool things. So let's get started. So this was the challenge that Audrey posted. It uh, has three challenges and uh, there are some time limits for each of the challenge and we'll try to follow that. Um, uh, and uh, Audrey has recommended to post these on uh, the app gallery so we'll do that as well. Uh, however, let's get uh, started now and uh, try to solve the challenge number one. So this challenge is around uh, letting your users only read your data sources or read data from your data sources and not giving them the permission to edit it. And uh, I think this is 100% possible. So let's click that and let's uh, um, move to kind of implementing this. So I went ahead and created some data sources. Uh, this um, is just some, uh, so this is my first data source, the Power App Swag. Um, this was uh, recently I got some swag from Audrey and uh, um, Brian when they gave out these community awards. And uh, these are not the exact numbers. I just randomly populated it. And I put a column over here as points required. And I will uh, I'll tell you about that in a minute over here. The second data source that I have is a user group participation. Now, this one is, uh, uh, these are also some random numbers. And I put some uh, points till date uh, for these users. So my uh, idea over here is to have uh, the points um, keep adding the points for users in this column and uh, when they meet a threshold they get qualified to get one of the swag items and i haven't updated this and this is just random data but what we'll do is just so that we can see it in the power app we'll uh, say this is 15 and uh, say this one as 55. Oh, I have to change that. Hmm. I haven't. I put this as a 1, zero, one to 10, and I had to change the weights. So let me go ahead, change this to 1000, just to be and uh, we'll change John's point to 15, Eric's to 25, Shane, you don't get any points, <laughs> and Dodd, uh, we'll let's say 45. Okay, now that we have those points for him, I'm going to should I say okay all right so we have the points over here um, we have these two data sources set up basically two SharePoint lists the other thing that you need to do is um, give the read permissions to the users who um, you want to give the access uh, to so you can go into list settings we go to the permissions for this list and so this is these are the general kind of created groups within a SharePoint site. So I want to give only read permission. So we'll go over here. And I've already given this to one of the user. So this is my um, developer account. So this is just a, another account that I added. Um, so this user will have read only permissions. Uh, similarly, I went ahead and gave the same 
I mean, it basically gives uh, this user, because it's in this group that API visitors will get the same read permissions for this list as well. Now, let's go back and keep this list open and try to create an app to get this to data sources. So what, what you mentioned over here is you want to get the data. Um, when the user authenticates into the app, they will click allow, but no one will have to browse the two data sources separately to get to the data. So when I think if I add the data source as SharePoint, it shouldn't have an issue, but we will We've implemented and see if it works or not. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a data source. Data source, add data source. It's nice that I can search here, but I have only a few connections in this, uh, so it's easy, but otherwise I can search as well. SharePoint site, uh, I only have one. And then I'll say these two lists connect. And I have both of these over here. And what I'll do is just so that things get loaded up. Uh, well, we can just go ahead and insert a gallery. I'll use this template, uh, the list template. It's just easier that way. And we can do is we'll remove this because we just need one screen over here. This is one screen. I'm trying to implement <laughs> some good naming uh, rules around it. Uh, so let's let's do that and let's have two lists right here. First one, let me just copy it. Paste it. Someone then created one thousand line. The height was more. I don't know why it did that. But um, okay, so we have these two lists, and actually I don't want an image or anything, so we just say title and subtitle, and similarly here title. Okay, so this list is, uh, I want the user group participation. So we have the, the user name and the points that they have. And this one, just to start off, we will say it's our website. And we got the swag list over here. In fact, I want the theme, and subtitle, and body because I want the points required for it as a um, subtitle. So what I can do is remove this over here. And just make it bold. color there. Okay. Alright, so what I want to show over here is for user, if they meet the points requirement, this list uh, should show only the, the swag that the user can get based on their points. So what we want to do is we want to filter this list based on the total points that this user has. So what we'll do is we'll go over here, say filter by swag based on, so my filter is basically the user that I select over here. So that's the template gallery list one. Amazing name for a gallery. Okay. Uh, next one, dot selected dot and I want the uh, points point 
install date. So these points should be greater than the what's the column name over here? The points required. So let's go here. Points required. Okay. There we go. So based on, so by default the first row gets selected. And we can do over here. So Eric, we can get these three. Shane, sorry Shane, you don't get anything. Dodd, we can get um, these four things. So that's and we can check for let's say Todd he has 45 points um, he basically gets everything except the Fardas t-shirt which I think he definitely has one <laughs> uh, so yeah that, that it's a simple kind of uh, way to show it I didn't want any uh, complications and we'll just say cool swag Double quotes. Okay. Now we need to test this thing. So let's um, let me and let's first save this app. Save Slack. Let's see if we can. There you go, and we will save it. Save. And what you want to do is you want to share this app now with the that user. So I think it should come the app right now. Okay, I have the app here. Click on share. And we add the user feedback. All right, and I just want to have these two. I mean, I don't want um, them as a corner. Let me give those permissions. The permissions were changed successfully, or saved successfully. Now we'll. Uh, this is uh, the user. Oops. Uh, right, there's the app. So the swag. Open it. Hopefully, it just says to allow. There you go. It doesn't show the two data sources, but it does show where the data is still coming from. And I just click allow. And it shows us the data sources. And we'll just try to click over here. Okay, but this again, this doesn't solve the exact uh, issue. I mean, we don't know for sure. So we we'll do one thing. We'll actually go to SharePoint. Uh, SharePoint, so that we can see if the user can edit the list in SharePoint. Should be the but okay. So hmm. it doesn't show up over here because the user hasn't uh, visited it. So what we we'll do is we'll actually just take the URL from here. Paste it. There we go, the user list is shown here. I mean, the list came up. Not now. And click on it. Oop. It doesn't allow it to edit. It doesn't allow the user. So we can't do anything. All right, so yep, we successfully did challenge one. That was uh, creating some kind of 
two, da two data sources uh, which the user is only able to read and not edit. I still wasn't able to do this thing where they won't even see where the data is coming from. And that is something which is interesting, which uh, we'll try to figure out in some other video later on. The next one, challenge number two. So the, the second challenge was to kind of have an inventory tracking app for a candy store. Now, I, I wanted to kind of track my inventory for the product swag itself, so I'll be doing around that. I hope Audrey doesn't mind that. Uh, the other bonus points that she said was uh, to create it in a solution um, so, and then export it to the app gallery. So let's go and uh, do some flow stuff now. So I already created uh, a solution and what I would say um, so it's under, if you go on flow solutions, click on new solution and you can create one. And then what I wanna do is I'll open that. And then under the solution, I can create apps or I can create a flow and other stuff as well, dashboard and stuff. But uh, so the, the advantage over here is you can create multiple things within the solution and then just export the whole solution so that people can just um, import that if they want to. So this way you don't have to individually export each app or flow um, and just export the whole solution, which is a combination of all these things over here. So we want to create a flow. Uh, the objective here is to have some kind of uh, a notification, I would say, that goes to the user when the inventory, or to the admin, I would say, when the inventory is kind of around near to kind of getting over. So in my case, what I want to do is, um, I want to see if the quantity, if it becomes um, one, um, I want to, basically send an email to Audrey that, oh, send me some more swag. Uh, but yeah, something similar to that. So let's let's see uh, how we can do that. All right, so create your flow. It's, so what I want is, I want to check the inventory for my case, it's not uh, dynamic. I don't want to do it kind of based on when the inventory changes, but I want to do it every day or maybe every week to check where the inventory is. This probably is not the best way to do it. However, uh, for my use case, it works for me when I, if, even if I check the inventory every day. So what we'll do is we'll do a recurrence so there's a recurrence, if you haven't used this before, um, you can basically um, run a flow at a regular interval. Uh, so I want it every day. Every day, I want to first get the invent, I mean, how much inventory I have. So first we'll do get items. Let's see, where is get items? Oh, there it is. Get items. My SharePoint site. And this is that swag. Okay. Now, since I have the items, I want to check the inventory so basically you want to check if an item for any item the inventory goes less than one or becomes one sorry um, I want to create some kind of alert so what we we'll do is we want to do a condition and I want the 
quantity quantity now i select that you'll see it will do and apply to each thing because there are items involved in it so it will do the check for each and every uh, sharepoint list item so if the quantity is equal to one add an action for now i'll just say i'll send me a notification and uh, yeah send me an email notification and i'll select inventory swag almost over and i want the swag name because i want to know what is missing what is going to get over the title body um to make a sign i can just copy the same thing for now i don't know what else i wanted in this this is the most simplest version of this inventory tracking thing i know it might be much more complicated for other stuff but yeah i think this is it i just want to check if the quantity is going less than one or has become one and, and at any day if the quantity is one i want a notification all right i'll do save and let's change the name over here did i create this oh yeah i did create it okay <laughs> just making sure i'm getting the bonus points over here okay so let's give it a good name uh, inventory be deactivated before it really can be activated hmm. not sure what's wrong with it let's, let's go back let's edit work on issue sure why this is showing like this hmm. maybe we'll just give it a test uh, so how much are the options give it a test hmm. that's really weird <laughs> we can do this oh it already ran the flow because it's today huh i think there's some issue with not changing the name let's see so let me go here and i can show you the email that i got so it said here swag almost over power apps bluetooth speaker because the inventory for that and the quantity is one I got the notification so every day that flow will run and give me the notification for this item um, because the quantity is one so Audrey, please send me more of these <laughs> okay so yeah here you go swag almost over all right so challenge number two done as well and let's see if i so if i go back 
my solution, we have the I mean the flow added over here, and uh, I can just export. I'm not sure if it's managed. I don't know. I guess managed. Exporting your solution. And while it does that, all right. So we have this over here, and I'll be uploading this on the app gallery. All right, let's move to challenge number three. Okay, challenge number three. So let's let's first have we would have to use Perl after this. Do we? Did we? I don't think so. We have to use Flow for this. All right, so challenge number three. Um, this is um, again we're using Flow. So if you like taking pictures and if you want to add them um, into your cloud um, you want to i mean this is one you need to create a flow to do that so you want to capture some details like the the, the date uh, the reason for the photo uh, geographical location and anything that uh, anything else that you want to capture now for this we have only 15 minutes so I think we should uh, speed up this. All right, uh, let's do one thing. Let's uh, go over here. Maybe Lewis, we can just create it in this this solution itself, so that we can export the whole thing. So this is my second flow. This is for challenge number three. And uh, the first thing that I want in this flow is gonna be. Any guesses? The flow button for mobile. So I'm adding a trigger of flow. And the two things that I need over here is one is the file itself, the image. I would say I just want the select image or photo. No file space. Add an input again. I want to get some data as well, like Hi, why did you take this photo? Now this, if you haven't used it, you can give it a list of options over here. I'll say, last option, one, family, family, and uh, what else? Power platform. I'll take some photos for that. And uh, yep, let's keep those three options. And the next thing that we want to do is we will. So I've created a document library in SharePoint. But I've selected that as to be my uh, the cloud location where I want to store it. I have the name modified, modified by is added by default. I added two columns that's location and why. And that's something that we'll get from this flow over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the SharePoint connector and I want to create a file first in the document library. So we'll use create file. So my SharePoint site over here is by API guy and the document library was pix. You didn't know this over here, pix. And then file name. So this is something which I'll show you in a second. It's it doesn't come up over here. The name of the file. Um, when you are kind of adding it from the flow, it 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 will show up when we run the flow. So I'll show you how to access that. So now we'll just put uh, some random thing. Let's just put date file content is the file content from the, the manual trigger. All right, so what we'll do is we'll try to run this as it is first. Save it. Let's rename it to save close to craft. And we'll test this 
on the trigger action. Hmm. That process must be deactivated before it can be active. So this is something that's weird that's happening uh, inside solutions. I might have a look into that. Guess we'll have to keep the name as this for now. Um, let's run this. Continue. All right, so I want to select some code over here. So I'm going to select this. I'm power and up sure if you haven't seen it. Like it. so, let's say power platform run flow done. That went successfully, and we don't have created a file over here, but it doesn't have any extension or anything, and just can't open it. So, what we want to do is we want to get the extension of the file, and you can see it from here. So there's a file content name and there's a file content content bytes. And just remember this, but we use it in an expression. Edit, create file. So if you see the expression for this one, it's trigger body file content bytes. bytes. We copy this. I know it's a bit tricky, but once you know what we're doing here, quite easy to understand. We will remove the exaggerate and these things. What we want is so what we want over here is we want a name instead of content bytes. Click OK. So we have created a file name with this name, the content, but we haven't it doesn't give the options to add the other properties, the, the location, the Y. So what we'll do is we'll do what we add one more action and that will be SharePoint update item. So we'll use the update item action. It's all the way at the end. Again, we select the SharePoint site. List name is Okay, so it's not in this because it's a document library. So we just have to name it. Just fix this custom value. And you can see over here it showed up the, the columns associated with it. Um, we need the ID. So that is something that you can get from the create file. This is the item ID. And then uh, title is, I think the title is the name from the file names we don't need that location is something that we need we'll use the location city and state oh no we can always change it and why i had said well, i had created like three options family food fun and we can change it over here size and I like taking pictures. I, I like making food and I like taking pictures of it. Uh, so, what we'll do is we'll use custom value. And, oh, it says input. I should probably give it a better name, but this is the thing that we want to load up over here. So, we'll click on save. Okay, so what I did is I I created it out from a solution because I was having some issues with changing it, uh, changing the flow in the solution. So I recreated the flow, and let's say save photos to the cloud, and let's 
clearing my view. I click on desk, perform the trigger action, and continue. One, I guess. Run the flow. Done. And flow ran successfully. We should see that load up over here. Nine. There you go. So we have the image. Select it, it opens up. It's loading. There you go, Power Maps Wednesdays. I close it, it searched in my location, the Y, um, modified by, and all that stuff. So that's challenge number three that we completed as well. I will say this is fun, let's go here, let's go this is my Twitter news do all challenges it took me let's keep it less than 30 minutes because we had some issues around this so let's keep it to less than 30 and did I click on? Yep. Okay. Submit. All right. So my um, submitted. So we did three challenges again to recap. Uh, the first challenge. Well, I'm not sure. <laughs> the first challenge was to create two data so like. Um, to create two data sources which the users can only read, not edit. Um, so we created that in this app over here. Oop, there you go, it is. Um, the other, the second challenge was to create an inventory tracking uh, um, flow. So this was the flow that we created to get the items, um, the quantity, and whenever it is one every day it runs this flow and then whenever the inventory for an item is one it sends me an email notification and the third one that we did was the uh, the loading pictures to the cloud and we just we used this flow where it uh, got the image uh, and the content created a file and added it to the document library with some other metadata and stuff. And you can add more here as well. So that's three challenges in less than 30 minutes. <laughs> All right, thank you for watching. And uh, if you like this video, please go ahead and click on subscribe. And if you need to, if you want uh, to watch some more videos from my uh, channel, just uh, browse through the channel and you'll see a lot of videos on power apps and flow so thank you for watching bye bye